The third uh, example of a simulation will be simulation of a project. So consider the following project with six activities, A, B, C, D, E, F. There are some names here, and we know predecessors for every activity. Um, however, we, we the, the duration or the, the activity time uh, for each activity, there is a, a, a random activity time, except for activity F, which takes always five days. So, for example, uh, for activity A, we know it might take four days, or eight days, or eleven days, and this is the likelihood. These are the likelihoods: forty percent, forty percent, and twenty percent for four days, eight days, and eleven. And the same for B, C, D, and E. There are some uh, possibilities, and notice that there's sometimes very extreme. For example, activity E can take two days, or as long as ten days. With 50 50 chances so um, so now um, the question is how long will the project take or uh, you know what's the how long can it be in the longest possible or, or, or what what can we promise right how long uh, the processing time the project duration can we promise to let's say some like our customer um, so we're going to solve it in two stages first we will try to look at expected uh, activity times so I'm going to compute for each of those activities expected time and then use critical path method, our uh, method from chapter 13, or chapter uh, 15, sorry, a critical path method, assuming activity times are equal to expected times, right? And then we will try to use simulation, we'll simulate 10 experiments, not just one experiment, but 10 experiments, and we'll try to compute these performance measures like expected duration, probability of exceeding 27 days, and probability that the path is critical for each path. So uh, first thing, we'd like to, uh, to use critical path method for expected uh, durations or mean uh, durations. So what is the duration for activity A? Well, we can compute it uh, by uh, right, computing uh, the expected value of this variable, right? expected time of A is equal to what? It's 0.4 40 percent chance it will be four days 40 percent chance it will be eight days and 20 percent chance it will be 11 days long right so if we do the computation here it is seven days exactly seven days so you can write here right <coughs> the number of days seven right expected time activity A should should be uh, performed in, in, in is seven days and then uh, we could repeat this for activity B activity C D E and F uh, except for F we know it's exactly five days right um, but for the other activities I did the computation before so I can provide you of the results 10 3 5 and 6 right so we know the actual mean number of days for all those activities. Um, now, uh, now we are going to use the critical path method using these number of days, numbers of days, uh, activity times, as if they were uh, exact, not expected, but exact uh, number of days each activity will take. So I'm going to use those um, uh, uh, nodes as if uh, as as in a critical path method. So I'll start with activity A, which takes seven days according to our assumption here, right? And then I will I will put some more activities. Activity B takes ten days. So I'm going to put ten days here. Activity B ten takes ten days and it is going to have predecessor activity a has b has predecessor a so i'm going to to connect it here make a a predecessor by connecting these two with an arrow and then uh, activity c activity c actually has predecessors b and d so let me put first activity d here right this is going to be activity d takes five days and then activity C has predecessors B and D C which takes three days right and the activity D has predecessor A so there will be a connection and then C both B and D right 
B and D are predecessors of C, so that's how we're plotting it. And then I still need activity E and F. Activity E has predecessor D, let's put it here. This activity E takes six days. And then activity F is going to be somewhere here. It takes always five days. This is not just expected time, so let's do the connections. The remaining connections will be D has predecessor, E has predecessor E and F has two predecessors C and E, right? So now we can we can tr try and compute start and finish times, earliest and latest for all activities. We have one starting activity, we have one finishing activity, so we don't need to add dummy activities. So we start with zero and we finish at the earliest on day seven. So activity B can start on day seven, takes 10 days, so it can finish in on day 17. Um, and then we can start activity D also on day seven, plus 5, so it will finish in on day 12. So we can start this activity C uh, not earlier than this, and this is finished. So maximum, we take maximum of 17 and 12, so it will start on day 17. So it has to finish on day 20 at the earliest, right? 17 plus 3. And then the same here on day 12 at the earliest, plus 6, 18. So that means that activity F can start on maximum 20 and 18 is 20, can start on day 20 and that means it will finish on day 25. We have earliest times, we can now do the backward pass. So we start with 25, latest finish time and then 20, uh, that's earliest, uh, sorry, latest start time. So we're computing latest times in a backward pass. So that's going to be 20 from here, 20 minus 6, that will be 14. So we can see this activity actually will have a slack of 2 days. This activity has slack of 0 days. Here we will, we, this has to finish start on day 20, so this has to finish on day 20. Minus 3, that will be 17. So you see there is no difference, so the slack is 0. What about activity B? Uh, has to finish before day 17. So 17 minus 10, 7. So it's 7, 17. So again here there is no slack, 0. And what about activity D? It has to finish before day 17 and day 14. So we'll take minimum of those. Will be day 14. So that means minus 5. It has to start on day 9. And uh, now going back to activity A, it has to finish before day 7 and before day 9, so that means it has to finish before day 7 at the latest, minus 7, 0. So we see slack here is 2 days, slack here is 0. And now if you look at those activities, this is critical, this is critical, this is critical, this is critical. They form one path, so we know from this analysis that, um, right, that the critical path critical path is A, B, C, F. This is the path A, B, C and F. And uh, the length of this critical path is 25 days, so project completion time is in 25 days. Earliest project completion time can finish it in 25 days according to these times. Right and, uh, now, this is only remember. This is just expected time, right? Based on expected times of all activities, 25 days. But actually, it's not very accurate because look at this. So for example, activity A, we assume seven days, but it can take between four and eleven days. So we can actually take much longer than 25 days. If activity A takes longer, takes for example 11 days, then the whole project completion time might be delayed beyond the 25 days, quite likely, right? So this is where we need simulation. But before we go to simulation, it's a good idea to actually realize what are the paths, all paths in this network. It's quite a small network, so we have only three paths. We have path A, B, C, F, the one that we already uh, right, uh, looked at. And its length 
is 25 days. But we also have ADCF, ADCF, and its length is what? 7 plus 5, that's 12, plus 3, 15, plus 5, 20. So this is 20 days, right? It's not critical as we can see. And we also have ADEF, ADEF. So, and then the length of this is 7 plus 5, 12, plus 6, that's 18, plus 5, that's 23, right? Currently, this one is critical as we saw before, right? And notice that we, instead of solving it using the CPM method, we can just list all the paths and compute their lengths. Now, when we simulate, uh, this is important fact we understand for this simulation, when we simulate, we will have the same paths, right? There are no more paths in this network and the structure of the network will not change because predecessors are not changing. All that will change is the, the, the durations of activities. Uh, C might not be three days, it might be two or four days and so on. So all that will change is that each path will change its length to a new number that depends on activity times which are random. And then maybe not ABCF will be critical, but another path will be critical, right? The longest path is what determines the project completion time, so the so project duration. So in this case, what I'm going to suggest is we simulate uh, the, the duration, or we compute the duration of the project as the duration of the longest path, maximum uh, path duration. So the way we're going to simulate this is as follows. Of course, I, again, if I have random numbers, I have to do mapping, again, 0 to 99 mapping. So uh, for activity A, if f four days is the uh, time of activity A with probability 40%, I need 40 numbers, 0 to 39, 40% for A, so it's 40 to 79, and 20%, that's 80 to 99. Similarly, I'll do the remaining distributions 40 till 59 and 60 till 99 and so on. So I have all the mappings and now I can start simulation and I will do it as follows. Uh, for each experiment I will have to generate random activity times for uh, activity A, B, C, D and E. For F it will always be five days because we know it's deterministic. And then I will compute the length of each of the path and, and then compute project duration uh, as the maximum length over all paths, right? We know that critical path is the longest path and the, the longest path is what determines the project duration. And then, and then we will see if the project exceeds 27 days or not. This is our uh, a threshold. Maybe we promised 27 days or we're thinking of promising to our customer 27 days as the project completion time. So we want to see what's the likelihood that we will exceed it or that we will deliver it. And then we will also want to look at which path is critical. So again, the same paths. I will just have indicators where it, whether it is critical or not, 1 or 0. So let's start with the first experiment. Now we need five random numbers here, so I have to again use Excel to generate them. So let's say I obtain these numbers, 57 for activity A, I'm going to use the first random number, 57 maps to 8 days, and um, 14 for B maps to also 8, this is actually short for B short time, the shortest time for B. For C, we'll take 76, 76 maps to 4 days. For D, we'll take 45, 45 maps to 4 days. And for E, 89, 89 maps to 10 days. And then F is 5 days always, so we'll keep it 5, right? So now we know how long each activity in this experiment takes, so we can compute the path length A, B, C, F. We have to add A, B, C and F to all these times. If you add them together, you'll see they are actually exactly 25. But let's look at A, D, C, F. 8 plus 4 plus 4 plus 5, that is 21. And A, D, E, F. A, D, E, F. 8 plus 4, that's 12, plus 10, that's 22, plus 5, that's 27. So in this case, which path is uh, critical? A, D, E, F is critical, so we'll recall this one is critical. And we will say a project duration now is maximum of those, 
is 27, right? It is the critical path length is 27. So did we exceed uh, the, the, the duration of 27? No, we didn't exceed. Let's put 0. We could put 0. I'll could leave it empty just to, to make it easier to read, right? Uh, so that's one experiment. Let's try to to generate a second experiment. Um, notice that in the previous examples of simulation I had full table for one experiment, but now the experiment, one experiment fits in one row of the table, right? So I can have multiple experiments. Before we were just doing one experiment, now I will have multiple experiments in a single table. So let me generate a few more experiments. And again, I need random numbers. So let's let's say these numbers are 60, 82 and so on, right? Um, so 60 maps for A to 8 days again, 82 maps to 12 days for B, um, 77 for C is 4, 22 for D is 4, um, and 45 for E is 2 two days. And of course F will always take five days as we said. So now we have A, B, C, F. That's 8 plus 12, 20, 24 and 5, 29. And uh, A, D, C, F, A, D, C. So that's 8 plus 4 plus 4. That's 16 plus 5, 21 again. And then A, D, E, F, A, 8 plus 4, that's 12 plus 2, 14 plus 5, 19. So now this is the longest. So the project will take 29. It now exceeds uh, 27 days. And the critical path is A, B, C, F, right? So we can repeat this experiment multiple times. I am not going to, to show you uh, d d these, but I'll just uh, fill it out f from another slide. So here are the, the numbers for the remaining eight experiments, right? Additional random numbers. Uh, for, the, for the mapping, I obtain the activity times, and then we compute path lengths. And you see project duration was varying in four uh, cases out of 10 experiments. Four experiments we've exceeded 27 days, was 29, 35, 30, and 28. And you see how many times paths were critical. Notice that we had a case uh, where two paths were critical, right? Both paths A, B, C, F and A, D, E, F were 23 days in this case, so I had two critical paths. So now if I'm interested in, first of all, expected project duration, I have to look at, at the total value of this column project duration, right? Actually, at the average value. So here I can see there are varying numbers, but if I if I want to have so if I take average value from this column, right, average value here, which is 26.6 days, I computed it before, right, this is my uh, like best estimate based on those 10 experiments, the best estimate for project duration is 26.6 days, right. Uh, of course, uh, this is still just a very small number of experiments. I could try and compute uh, based on, on these numbers, a 95% confidence interval, for example. Uh, the question that I ask myself is also, what's the probability I will exceed uh, 27 days? So that's from this column, right? So if I, c I can compute it, let me compute it here, uh, probability that project exceeds 27 days is is what? four times, so I have four times uh, sum of this column divided by how many experiments in total I have 10. So four out of 10, so that's 40% chance that I will exceed 27 days, right? So if I'm promising 27 days or less, I should be careful, right? Uh, because quite likely I am exceeding uh, the 27 days. I should probably not promise uh, th this this time, especially if my life depends on it or is very critical. And then I can also pr compute probability that each path is critical, so there will be a 40% chance this path is critical, 0% chance this path, and this actually is very likely critical. It's 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, so it's 70%. This path is critical, right? So we have, sorry about that, 70%. Uh, so we have uh, we have uh, simulated now we've made 
10 experiments and we're looking at the average over those experiments, we're actually getting quite accurate values, but we could also do some statistical analysis to compute confidence intervals for those. So that concludes our third simulation.